Number four, balance the equations below, assuming they occur in an acidic solution. And then we have our equation. So we have PbO2 plus HD yields HD22 plus plus Pb2 plus. All right. So they said the dreaded words. They said to balance in a acidic solution. Yay. So this is not normal balancing. Whenever they say we have to balance in either an acidic solution or a basic solution, there are steps. Now, there's a lot of them. There's eight total steps in a, ba in a balance, the acidic solution type of question. But the thing is, is that if you can get these eight steps down and they give you an acidic solution question on your test or quiz, it's always going to be these eight steps no matter what. And the order is always going to be exactly the same, no matter what they throw at you. So the idea here is that if you can get these eight steps and you could get them in the correct order and keep practicing and practicing, you will be golden for your test or quiz. All right. So let's just start. The first thing that we have to do whenever they say balance in an acidic solution, we got to take the whole equation that they gave us and break it into two half reactions or two half equations. Now, this one is kind of just easy. All you're doing is you're just picking the elements that go together. So for example, I see a mercury on the left side and I see a mercury on the right side. So this would be one of my half reactions. HG goes with HD. Then on the flip side, you just kind of like pick up the pieces. Okay, well, here's a PB, right? It's got an oxygen, sure, but, but on the other side, there's the other PB. So they go together because they both have, you know, lead in it, PB. So I'm going to put PB O2 yields PB2 plus. Cool. That's the first one. And then we have the second half reaction, HG, which will yield HG2. And then that one has a two plus. Okay, perfect. Let's just, you know, make these a little centered and everything's good to go. Step one done already. Look how easy that was. So now let's go through step two. Right after you make those, those two half reactions, we have to balance all the elements except for hydrogen and oxygen. Don't even bother looking at hydrogen and oxygen. You look at every other element. So that means that I'm only looking at the lead here. I have one lead and I have one lead. So that's balanced. So that's cool. And then on the bottom, I have one mercury, HG, but then I have two mercuries here. When we're balancing all the elements except for our oxygen and hydrogen, you can only add coefficients. So in this case, since I have one mercury and I have two here, I have to put a two in front of the HG. And now that element is balanced. And now we're done. So number two is done. Now notice how I'm working through both equations basically at the same time. I'm not going to run through all eight steps on this one and then come back to this one. You kind of want to flow with it. So make sure you do all of step two, then move on to step three, then move on to step four with both equations. So now step three. Now we're going to balance those oxygens. And we're always going to balance the oxygen by adding H2O. Keep in mind that it's always oxygen before hydrogen. It's never the other way around. So the, the, the meaning here is that if you need one oxygen, you will always add it as one H2O. But sometimes you might need more. You might need two oxygens. Well, you'll just add two H2Os. If you need three oxygens, you'll add three H2Os and etc. So let's just start from the top. I have two oxygens here. I have no oxygens on the right side, so it looks like I need to add H2O. But how many? Well, I need two oxygens, so I'm going to add two H2Os. Now let's just check the bottom. No oxygen on the left, no oxygen on the right, so essentially that one skipped, and step three is done. We're almost halfway there. The next step now is to go for the hydrogens. And when you want to balance the hydrogen, you do so by adding H plus. Don't forget that plus there. It's super important. That's what makes it acidic, the H plus. Same type of idea here. If you need one hydrogen, 
you will always add it in terms of one H plus. So if you need two hydrogens, it's two H plus, three hydrogens, three H plus, et cetera, et cetera. So now let's see what's going on here. No hydrogens on the left side. When I come over here and I look at my whole right side now, I have two times two hydrogens. I have a total of four hydrogens here. So I have four hydrogens on the left. I have no hydrogens on the right. So it seems like I have to add hydrogens here. But now how many? I needed four. So I'm going to say four H plus. Come down here. No hydrogens on the left. No hydrogens on the right. So thank goodness we can basically just skip that step. And we're halfway through. Let's keep going. Step five. Now, since all the elements are balanced, we're now going to finally start trying to balance the electrons. So in this case, for step five, we're going to add electrons. Electrons are always represented as E minus to always the more positive side. So what I'd like to do here is I like to split the equations right down the middle, both of them, <coughs> just to kind of show you that this is one side and this is the other side. I don't want to you know, mingle one with the other. And in order to add the electrons, the first thing you're going to do is always look at the upper right hand corner for your charges. Well, here's a charge. I don't see a charge for the PBO2. There was a charge for the PB and there wasn't a charge for the H2O. For all the ones that did not have a charge, that's always going to be a zero. And the good thing about this type of finding the charges out is that you don't have to search for every individual charge in the compound. Just look for those upper right hand corner guys. Now let's get the total. Let's start with the H plus. The plus meant that it was a plus one, right? So I had a plus one charge, but now I have four hydrogens. So I have to take that four and times it by the plus one. Four times plus one is an overall of a plus four charge. Coming over here, I have a zero charge. Doesn't matter what's in front because anything times zero is zero. And now you're literally going to add them together. So plus four plus zero is an overall charge of a plus four. So that's my overall charge of the left side. Let's do the same thing for the right side. Here I have a plus two and I only had one of them, right? So one times a plus two is a total of a plus two charge coming over here. Zero times two is still going to be zero. And literally we have to add them together. So plus, whoop. So plus two, oh boy, there we go. Plus two plus zero. I'm just going to put the total over here is equal to a plus two. So now there's your two charges, plus four and a plus two. We're always going to add electrons to the more positive side. Four is higher than two. So I'm going to add electrons on the left side. And then you think of like bunny hops to get down to the other number. How many numbers is four away from two? It's two numbers away. So I'm going to add two electrons. Let's do the same thing for the bottom one. Check to see if you see any um, charges in the upper right hand corner. For this one, I don't see any. And this one, there's a plus two. So let's see. This one meant that there was a zero. Doesn't matter because any time times zero is a zero. I don't have to add anything on this one because it's only the one. So this is a zero overall charge. Here's a plus two. There was only one HG. So one times a plus two is a plus two. And there's your overall charges. Zero to plus two, you add the electrons on the more positive side. That's this side. So I know that I have to add uh, E minus on this side. How many? Well, to get from two to zero, I add two electrons. And that step is done. Now, just know that step number five, even though it's done, it's a very, 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 very important step. Because at this stage of the game, you can determine out of your original equation, 
who is the reducing agent, who's the oxidizing agent, or in other words, who's the oxidant and who's the reductant. So I wrote that down all over here. This is the stuff that probably your teacher or professor isn't going to give you on your test and quiz. It's what you have to memorize. So just know that an oxidant, aka a reducing agent, they mean exactly the same thing, is always the one that is undergoing oxidation. And oxidation just means that you're losing electrons. You could think of this as Leo, the lion, says Gur. L-E-O, lose electrons, oxidation. And that's your oxidant. When you have the balanced equation, you can always tell if something is going under oxidation by seeing where those electrons are. If the electrons are on the right side of the equation, that's the one that's undergoing oxidation or, the, or being the oxidant. On the flip side, reduction, gain electrons, that's the reductant or the oxidizing agent. But look where those electrons are. They're always on the left side. So I have two electrons here. It doesn't really matter how many you got to determine whether you are the reductant or the oxidant, just the placement. Over here, the electrons are on the right side, as in this equation. The electrons are on the right side. And whoever got you there is the oxidant. Just know that when you're doing redu reducing agent or oxidizing agent or oxidant and reductant, your products are never, ever, ever going to be the answers. It's the only the two that you started with. So since this is showing oxidation and that came from Hg, that's who your oxidant is. So Hg is your oxidant. And when you find that out, the other one's got to make sense too. These electrons are on the left side, and it was PBO2. That's the reductant. So just kind of like a side step, just in case your teacher or professor asks that question on your test or quiz. It just comes from step five. And now since we found it out, we can now go to step six. Step six. We want to take those electrons and just balance them. They have to be the same number because, in essence, you want to cancel those electrons out. And thank goodness, because two electrons and two electrons, they're already done. They're balanced. They're the same. So I don't even have to do step six. We're almost there. Step seven. Now, since they're balanced, we want to cancel those like substances on opposite sides. You're simplifying. So anything that's alike, and that's why you want the electrons to be the same, because goodbye and goodbye. Now I'm just looking at anything else. Is there anything else across the board that is the same between these two sides? Not that I see. So step seven is done. And finally, you take whatever you got left and add it together, because now we're just bringing it to one equation which means that anything that was on the left side is going to stay the left side. Anything that was on the right side is going to stay the right side. It does not matter what you say first. So I'll just, you know, do from top to bottom. So I'll say that we have four H pluses plus PBO2 plus two HG yields. I guess we'll do PB2 plus, and maybe I'll drop down to the bottom, just to show you that, you know, you can switch it up. It doesn't matter the, the position. They just all have to be on the same side. Plus to the two H2O, make this centered and call it a day. Box it off. That's your answer. Oh yeah. That's your balanced equation in a six is, <laughs> oh boy, acidic solution, right? And now steps eight done, we can check it off and we're now finally done. Thank you for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel and just make sure that you, you know, give yourself the time to memorize these steps because it's really going to help you on your test or quiz. All right. So just keep practicing. Um, I, I hope to talk to you in future lessons and I hope you, you're having a great day. All right. Keep studying hard. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.